Good evening, everyone. It's Tom Sydney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Psych Club, from the Tom Numbers Show, and from News with Tom Numbers. And I've got the real special privilege of uh, talking to a tennis legend, Mr. Pat Cash. And also, I should put out right at the front a mutual friend of ours, Matt Letizia, a great soccer legend, put us together. So, Matt, shout out to you. Thank you for it, buddy. And Pat, it's great to have you on the show, man. How are you, mate? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm pretty well actually. Like, I'm in uh, currently in, in California. Um, down here, I'm working with an, an American player, uh, American girl. Uh, so she's got a tournament here in in um, uh, at Stanford, Stanford University, a beautiful Stanford University, and and uh, then we'll head east and head, head hit New York and hopefully get some results in the U.S. Open. Um, you know, so yeah, it's uh, so I'm a bit jet lagged. I uh, just arrived a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's a long that eight hours uh, behind uh, thing from uh, the UK. So yeah, I'm, but I'm all right. I'm all right at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> if, I, if I fall Dude. asleep, then uh, <laughs> start snoring. <laughs> oh, 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 Cash, wake up! Yeah, no, I hope for you, wake up. Exactly, exactly. It'll be it'll be interesting <laughs> for you and fun. And uh, so I'm a big full disclosure. I'm a big tennis fan. Um, and uh, it's great to, to to break bread with you on it. So just for people that are new, people from my channel will get this, but people that are following just because Pat's on the show, um, I'm known as Tom Numbers, and the reason for that is I use a, uh, like Pat was probably saying, a numerology form, which is called simple gematria. It's very simple to understand. Maybe takes a little bit of the brain just to get used to, but it's quite fun and quite useful. It's simply A is the first letter of the alphabet, so it equals one. B is the second letter, so equals two. C equals the third letter, so it's three. All the way through to Z or Z, 26th letter. And as I do shows with people, I get to notice some similarities, some synchronicities, for want of a better phrase, that's quite interesting. Anyway, I was doing some research. I was I was playing back uh, the footage of your uh, magnificent win in 1987 at Wimbledon Champion. And uh, I noticed this. I don't know if you ever noticed this, Pat, but I'm just going to put it out there. So, okay. You've just literally, tell me if you can see that. Can you see that okay? Yeah, yep, yep. Can you see the time of the match, how long the match has played for? Two hours 45, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two hours 45. Yeah, okay. There's a three there as well, because I think they've just done the scoreboard and then it's just coming up. But the, the top figure, 245, is the length of the match. So it's two hours 45. But it's showing the number 245. Now, the reason that's caught my attention is if you do my full name, Thomas Sidney Bushnell, in numbers, it comes to 245. And I was like, right, I'm going to point this out to Pat right at the beginning. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, just a nice little synchronicity, a little bit <laughs> off uh, to there. And... Um, also, so if you do if you do packed cash, mm. so P is the sixteenth letter, A is the first, T is the twentieth, that comes to thirty seven, and then cash, C is the third, A is the first, S is the nineteenth, and H is the eighth, which comes to thirty one. But packed cash is thirty seven plus thirty one comes to sixty eight. Sixty eight comes to a number of things, but it comes to the uh, the word language. And obviously, we're talking. We're talking in the English language, but also if you do Patrick Cash, I know you go by Pat, mm. but Patrick Cash comes to one hundred nine. And my channel is called Sight Club, which is one hundred nine. But Patrick Cash is also one hundred nine. Anyway, just some similarities, some some coincidences, some some uh, synchronicities that I noticed right at the beginning when I looked at your stuff. So I thought I'd mention those just off the bat, just to kind of give you a little bit of. You know, so that's that's how I kind of work. I see things, Pat. You know, I, I know his stuff. Um, but I wanted to get into. Um, well, not many people call me Patrick. Not many people call me Patrick. My mum does. Well, my mum used to call me Patrick, but she's so used to people call me Pat, and she actually now calls me Pat. <laughs> she calls me Pat Cash. So, <laughs> <laughs> was usually family always know me as Patrick, but uh, yeah, my mum actually has changed it. But it was usually when I heard Patrick, I usually realised I was in trouble. Then my yeah, That's my it. dad was my dad was Patrick as well, but he was known as Patty from to the family. So, or Pat. So I was Patrick. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it's the same same thing with my dad. So I'm when people. I mean, I go by Tom, Thomas, Tom Numbers, 
Tom Sydney Bushnell, but Thomas Sydney Bushnell. So my, same thing. My dad is Tom as well. So he'll quite often call me Thomas. And it's, I guess it's that yeah. familial family thing. It's like, oh, are you in trouble or you're being spoken to by your, by your, finger, <laughs> by your parents? So I get that as well, man. Yeah. 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 yeah, funny. yeah so, uh, <laughs> I wanted to go into, um, you know, your, your greatest achievement in the, in the game in, in, uh, in tennis. I mean, Wimbledon champion is like a kind of, it's almost like you're crowned from the gods, you know, like, Zeus has given you a medal of achievement because Wimbledon men's champion, I mean female as well, but there's not many of them that don't make them many. You know, there's not many. And some of them gobbled really? up multiple, so made it even less. But, you know, in the last yeah. 50 years, there's only a relative few handfuls of, of men's Wimbledon champions and you're one of them. So it's a great, it's just a great accolade in sport. And when you got into tennis, did you dream? I mean, some players have talked, and other sports guys I've interviewed have talked about kind of, visualizing and manifesting some of the victories that they had. I, I interviewed Sven Goran Eriksson. Um, I've, I've, I've known Sven for a while, but I interviewed him a couple of times and he's famously written in books talking about how he, he felt that he would be England manager. But then when I interviewed him, I asked him about it, he said he kind of played it down a bit. So maybe it was kind of misinterpreted for the book back then. But a lot of people have spoken about visualizing that. Did you, did you kind of go to bed at night thinking oh, I'm going to be Wimbledon champion? Did you did you dream of that? Did you allow yourself to go that way? Were you very kind of strict and harsh on yourself? No, I've got to put the yards in to get to that. What was your process? What was your where you started and, and actually lifting the, the trophy? How did you know how did that work for you? Well, I mean, I th initially I just went out there to play tennis because I enjoyed it. I mean, I think that was that's the, got to be the top priority with with anything you do is you go out there and if you, you enjoy it and you love it then then you're willing to uh, put the hours in and, you know, to be, to be uh, the best in, in any, any, any field, no matter what it is, you got to put hours in, don't you? You got to have some, yeah. some form of talent, of course, that helps. Um, so, you know, I was, I just did sort of went out there and enjoyed it. I was good at sport. Um, yeah. Aussie rules, football, cricket, whatever, whatever it was, I was uh, running athletics, um, you know, sprinting mainly, uh, you know, I was, I was good at that and I just picked tennis up. And it was it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun and carefree, and you know, I was just learning, uh, enjoying my enjoying my time. And I think, um, um, you know, at fifteen, I was starting to play the, the, the you know the, the better players in the state and then the country, and then uh, getting a chance to play in some of the international tournaments. Um, you know, that's when you uh, you know get it. It's kind of fun as well because you got. You kind of have nothing to lose, but and and I started doing okay and got picked, ended up getting picked up for the um, Davis Cup, and then um, you know play, playing the Davis Cup squ initially squad and then the team and then um, uh, and at some stage it sort of it becomes it goes from sort of fun, carefree to a little frightening and and you know everybody ex you know expecting you you know, pressure to to win for your country and and all that sort of stuff and then. Um, expectations on that you know you want to win yourself so i i wouldn't say i necessarily visualize i mean everybody dreams of sort of what wanting winning Wimbledon or winning the australian open or whatever it happens to be and my, yeah my goals in my career really were to win wimbledon play davis cup for australia uh win win that obviously try to win that of course and 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 then the australian open um they were the sort of the three three ones us open um would have been great as well but um you know i think i quickly realized that the french open was probably beyond me i didn't really have that the clay court even though i grew up playing on clay i, I didn't uh, i didn't Did really you? quite you have on, the... you grew up playing on clay okay yeah yeah we had we're similar courts in melbourne than we do than you do in the, in the uk they have the shale the, the, yeah the, 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 yeah it's very very similar almost identical actually so it's not exactly european clay but it's it's pretty it's pretty close to it so that was what i grew up on you know played all year on that and then and the summertime over easter and summer we played on the grass so we played used to play junior tournaments or legends or um seniors tournaments uh pro pro tournaments money tournaments so I, I learned my grass court game from that but i didn't really like playing necessarily like playing on grass or serving volleying um I, I played played from the back of the court but then you know a few things uh, it happened in my, you know, my career and my life. And, uh, you know, I was watching, I was a big fan of John McEnroe's and I, I just saw the tactics that he was, that he was using, uh, on players. And, 
you know, McEnroe was the man then, uh, yeah, Borg, of course, as well. But, you know, Borg was a more of a baseline, baseline type of player. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he was just a, just a, just a wall, you know, he's just lightning fast, never made mistakes, never got flustered. It was kind of, it was kind of interesting, you know, and, and yeah. I, I watched John Mac, John, I mean, John became a good friend of mine, but it was interesting hearing his, in his documentary, was it a documentary or was, was it the, maybe the, maybe it was the, uh, the gods of, gods of Wimbledon, uh, gods of tennis, uh, thing that came out recently. And he said, you know, people thought I was the freak. I said, he said, I'm not, I'm normal. I'm human. You know, I get upset. Borg was a freak. He, he never <laughs> got upset. I mean, that's, that's not human. And he, he's kind of right. I thought like, it's a good point. <laughs> it's a, it's a good point. You know, he used to get McEnroe got pissed off, but I love the way he, his tactics. I love the way he played. Uh, and uh, so I sort of started copying more of that. And then all the Aussies growing up, they're all attacking players. You know, they're all serve volleyers. My yeah. heroes, Newcomb and, it was John Alexander and uh, the guys were sort of I could I could I could watch and Ken Rose was even still playing so uh, Yvonne Goulagong, Corley and they, they, these players that uh, some some people might be scratching their head about but they've all won Wimbledon several times a couple of times at least and and they're all attacking players and so yeah. I, I just developed it as an attacking player but when it comes to visualization I did a lot of visualization. Um, Actually, in the main part of my career, um, I had a, got a sports psychologist. Um, I was it was at a stage of my my career where I was, uh, I don't know, or maybe I was, you know, I was I wasn't dealing maybe necessarily with the pressure so well. It was, it was really getting getting to me, and I was getting, uh, you know, pretty pissed off with uh, the intrusion of light in, in into my life and everything else yeah. being. Yeah. Winning Davis Cup for Australia, and next thing you know, you're on. Everybody's watching every move you, you do, and um, you know, I kind of did need some help. I, and one of the one of the many things that we did with um, uh, the, my, my physio was that was the head physio of the Australian Olympic team, and he knew all the all the all the all the co his colleagues. Uh, and one of them was a great, very good sports psychologist called Jeff Bond, and he worked various. Uh, in, in various uh, uh, sports. And, you know, one of the things we did a lot was visualization. Um, so we used to do that every night, every, every night before the, the, the next day's match, we used to sit down and do meditation uh, and then, uh, uh, and then visualize the match, what, you know, what could go right, what could go wrong and, uh, and various things like that. So that was an extremely powerful tool. I got uh, really, really good at it where I could, um, you know, I could really, and, and it helped a lot when it came out to playing my final at Wimbledon because I'd done so much visualization on, on the preparation on the actual, the final that, um, I mean, you don't have, you don't know if you're in the final, of course, until the two days before, because you win the semifinal, yeah. then you're in the final, but you're getting pretty good at, pretty good at that. But it's a different, different ball game when you're coming out for a final at Wimbledon. It's just the atmosphere is just completely different. And I'd played Davis Cup where I had, you know, yeah, you know, twelve thousand people in the cr crowd screaming and yelling, or ten thousand mm. screaming and yelling for you to, to to try and win. There's a bunch of Swedes, Swedish guys were there. You know, they'll they'll go crazy and chanting and singing all sorts of songs. And so it was, um, you know, that's that's a real pressure cooker atmosphere, of course. But uh, when you're going out there to try and win the the title that you you've always uh, hoped to win, and it's the biggest title in the world. I mean, it, I, oh, yeah. people like to say. You know, if there's one tournament you can, what you should, what you, you want to win, and you at the beginning of your career, almost everybody, maybe a few of the French or maybe Americans would say the U.S. Open, the French might say the French Open, but really, if there's one title to win, it's Wimbledon. And so, uh, you know, the visualization helped a lot. You know, I settled down really quickly into the match, and and um, you know, and and got the job done. So, uh, yeah, the visualization is extremely, extremely important, and it's been. Uh, it's uh you know it's an old i suppose it's an old stoic type of type of um thing that we've you know heard from uh seneca and marcus aurelius and and uh you know the, the, the people like that they've always talked about visualization and 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 the good and bad you know visualization yeah. i mean marcus aurelius is famous for saying you know always expect the worst out of your your the the, the people that you're dealing with of course he's a famous roman emperor so yeah. always expect the worst and, and they might surprise <laughs> you so 
So you're not upset. So you don't get upset or you don't react when the worst actually happens. So um, it's it's interesting yeah, that uh, it certainly works, visualisation. Yeah, well, it did for you. And I mean, you know, to win that, like I said, it's one of those rare, yeah, I mean, you're quoting, um, you know, uh, Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it is. It's, it's stuff for legends. It totally is. It's funny it as is, well. It's, it's funny because it's not one of those things you actually think about necessarily other than it's a big tournament. You're just going out there to try and do your best. And uh, as, you, as you said, Borg had got so many and there's so many players uh, and it's even getting harder and harder now. To, to I mean, you look at Federer and Djokovic, uh, yeah. Borg, you know, McEnroe's won three and, you know, Edberg's won a couple, Becker's, Becker's won three. There's not many, yeah, there's not many people who can slot in and, and have grabbed the Wimbledon title. So it is pretty... It is pretty rare. <laughs> so I think I'm more, I appreciate that more and more the older I am. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's the golden, you know, talking in mythology, it's like the golden fleece, isn't it? It's like there's no, there's not many that get to wear it. And when you mentioned yeah. Borg, this is so funny. So this is how my mind works with things. But, but when you said McEnroe was saying, well, he's not human, I'm human because I, you know, I have react. And then when you said about Borg, I was like, Borg, because I just did a show with a friend of mine just prior to this one, and he was talking about the Borg, like artificial intelligence. I was like, hang on. <laughs> Pat tried to tell us something. I was like, it's funny. And then Bjorn, like born Borg, born a cyborg. Anyway, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're, you're not. And, uh, and maybe, maybe, maybe it was. And who knows? Maybe we're, we're, we're amongst them. But, but Bjorn was a great, a great player, a great ambassador for the sport. Um, but that's funny just how the, the wordplay of, of things, you know, Sunlight truth is stranger than fiction, but um... Cyber, cyborg, yeah, yeah, it's probably true, actually. Yeah, <laughs> but he's, he's actually a very human person, he's just quiet, quiet, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he found he found a recipe to, for success, so it's but uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a lot, of, he's really fun once you once he has a couple of drinks in him, he's more than fun. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant, yeah. typical Swede, <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, that's what like Sven's like, just super calm and chill, but then once he does. I've had a couple of, he won't remember, but I've had a couple of conversations when he's, he's been, uh, he's had a bit of a drink and he's, and he totally, he's very funny actually, Sven. You, you know, people that might know him closer will know that. Um, you talked about, and as well, when you said the word human, human comes to Tesla 57. And I've got a little bit, I wanted to mention a bit later about uh, Djokovic, because he's mentioned Nikola Tesla a little bit about the quantum, about quantum physics. Interestingly enough, our our joint friend Matt Letizia, if you do Matthew Letizia in numbers, it comes to two hundred and six, which comes to quantum physics. So maybe that's why Matt was able to kind of put the ball in places that maybe it shouldn't be able to go. But he used to be able to do it so gracefully and kind of produce magic out of out of nowhere. But uh, but yeah, humans fifty seven, Tesla's fifty seven. Um, I wanted to look at your. Who, who was it? Okay, I've got a couple of questions. I'll start with this one. If we say the top three tennis players of all time in, in the men's game, the big three, Djokovic, Federer, and Nadal, who, if they played in your era, your game, your skill set, who do you think you would have had the most success against? Probably none of them, to be honest. They're, they're pretty awesome players. Um, <laughs> it, it, was, it was different. I think I think the person that would have crossed across the best in uh, my era, which were, you know, we're talking about early days with wooden rackets, of course. The balls were very fast. The grass courts were very fast. Uh, they didn't bounce. Yeah. Didn't bounce particularly high. So therefore, right. it's much harder to hit a passing shot. So any of the players that were forcing you to hit passing shots would have been very tough to play. And that's Federer. He, he served in volleys a lot. I mean, Djokovic yeah. does it quite quite well as well. And Nadal's, they, they've, they've got everything. But I think I think the player who would probably be uh, least, uh, and he would adapt because he's such a super talented player, but the one who would struggle the most would be Rafa, for sure. Because, okay. because of the strings, because of the racket technology, and because of his technique, the way that he hits so much top spin and various follow throughs and, and, and stuff like that. You just simply couldn't do that with the rackets and the strings of, of our era. You had to hit it much, much flatter. Um, yeah. And, and so Rafa would probably, he wouldn't be as not to say that he wouldn't be able to uh, change and adapt and be, be, be brilliant, but 
literally took the player and went right here's and here's a, put him on a fast court with fast balls and play against a serve volleyer Federer would be a nightmare straight off the bat he'd be able to pick it up in five minutes uh, and I bet I think Djokovic the baseliners would struggle a bit more and you know you get in there and make them pass pass all uh, but you know they, they these guys like you know Murray or whatever they I mean Andy Murray's a great serve volleyer he, he would adapt to that very very well as as well um but uh it would take a it might take a little little while for them to adapt but it wouldn't take them too long yeah yeah um what do you in terms of Alcaraz so he's the new kid on the block he's the new guy on the block and I see and I'm sure well other people have mentioned it, I see pieces in all the top threes game I think Novak and uh, you know kind of alluded to that when he talks about strength and weaknesses of all the top three and he says He's kind of got a bit of all of them in terms of their strengths. How far do you... I never really seen him too much other than at this Wimbledon, so I hadn't really followed him too much on the French. I'd, I'd heard his name, but I hadn't really watched him properly until this last couple of weeks when we had the championships. How? What do you see with him? I, mean, I know McEnroe, when he commented and mentioned, he said he's basically got the line. It's really up to him how far he goes. What do you see in him as a player and his the kind of raw talent he's got. And now he's actually, you know, he's got two grand slams already and he's only age 20. What do you see? How far do you think he could go? Well, I mean, it's hard to say how far he would go. I mean, it's, that's a, it's a big question, but he is very, very complete player. And there's, I mean, the only, the, the player that I've, that I compare, compare him to really um, is, is, uh, or fe- early, early Federer who had kind of everything. Uh, Nadal yeah. had to learn to volley, uh, so did Djokovic hit that you know they took a even though they were very successful super young I mean Nadal won the French Open at 17 um, you know it took him a little while to get to, to adapt to the faster courts um, not too long of course because he I think he won Wimbledon at the age of 21 or 22 anyway but um, uh, he's it was Boris Becker really Be- Becker came out Federer obviously was complete but Be- Becker as well at 17 mm. never seen him so hard and had such a complete game at 17 just to be a serve volleyer you really got to know your way around the net and where the players are going to hit the passing shots and and then and, and things like that becker was just phenomenal uh but alcaraz is you know has learned somewhere along the line i'm not exactly sure where but he's learned how to volley he knows how to where to position the ball he's he picks the ball up very well and he's a really good thinker and can work out. I mean, he's not just power. He's power. There's no doubts about that. And he's very incredibly fast, just absolutely yeah. lightning fast. So he's going to get a lot of shots back and he's going to hit a lot of power, you know, with these, with the rackets and the strings these days, you can hit a lot of power from, from far off the court. And, uh, you know, if his body stays well, his body stays good. You know, yeah, she he could win. He could win a whole bunch of grand slams, but uh, you know, it's hard to know at this stage. He's got two. Well, yeah. If you're going to get twenty five, or is he going to get ten? You just you just don't know. Um, but he is incredibly complete player, uh, and it's very rare you see that in a player coming through at the age of twenty. As I said, there's there's only a couple I could think of him. Yeah, you know, maybe Sampras as well. Uh, you know, but they're they're they're, they're the greats of the greats. You know, it's, we're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember John saying that. Um, just kind of depends on how far he, you know what he does and how far he could go. But in terms of just the the package, and Novak said that in his interview, he said he'd never really played a player quite like him, which was a big compliment. You know, because um, obviously right now technically. Um, Novak is the goat with 23 slams, you know, and if you measure it that way, which, you know, pretty much everybody does. Um, yeah, so it's, it's be fascinating to see how far he goes. Yeah, it is. And, and, and I think he's, I mean, let's say, let's take Novak aside. No, he's still got a bit of life in him, um, of course. Uh, but, you know, the next run of, of players that are coming come back and are going to get challenged, Alcaraz who are they and how many grand slams can he get and this is what I said about Nick Kyrgios Nick Kyrgios you know the Australian player is a bit yeah he's a the wild wild boy uh 
Thanks, Mac, Mac and Ray and I look like like uh, schoolboys. Actually, quite like like uh, <laughs> choir boys, I should say. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, he he's because Nick is twenty eight now. I think he's twenty eight. Um, he had a gap between the 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 great you know Federer and Nadal, Djokovic, Murray. Murray's still playing, but then yeah. those guys were dominant. And then you've got a gap. Then you've got a. You, you know the new guys coming up. You have got Sinner and Rude and the Alcaraz and and uh, you know these these other Kyrgios fat fit right in the middle of that. And if he had pulled his got his shit together, he could have won a few Grand Slams. He could have really they've done. You know that was the that was the moment. And of course last year's Wimbledon, he got to the final. Um, you know it's. Uh, uh, if, you know, it was a weak, very weak tournament because they're missing the Russians and Belarusian players um, because Wimbledon banned them. God knows whatever reason it is. What was uh, that's another head scratcher, but the tennis world <laughs> didn't like that, of course, and uh, yeah. cancelled all the rankings, fined them millions of dollars, and all that sort of stuff. Could have told them that, but uh, but uh, yeah, Nick had a chance to sort of do it, and and, and um, now. Alcaraz, he's you know now Alcaraz just jumped jumped in there, hasn't he? he yeah. So he's got that gap. Sinner, yeah, uh, quarter, you know these these sort of players, they they're coming, they're coming, they're not quite there. Alcaraz is there, so you know in theory Alcaraz could probably grab you know in theory probably grab six Grand Slams before these other guys you know get get to him. Yeah, uh, you know which would mean he'd have eight Grand Slams in the next two or th- two or three years in theory yeah. if he stays fit. Because nobody else, you know, the old brick, when there's an, when when the when era finishes, is usually a week, a slightly weaker era afterwards. And and um, you know, the are obviously great players, but they don't have the sort of the eighties was a fantastic era where so many champions just one after the other. We still Orlando was the youngest player, and um, you know, then was, you know myself and Edberg. There was so many different contrasting players and sports personalities. There was a really amazing era. And then, you know, the beginning of the 90s was sort of Sampras and Agassi. And, you know, there's a few other great players thrown in there, Safin and these sort of guys. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a couple, but, uh, sure, yeah. uh, but you know what I mean? So, yeah. And, and it dropped and it came up again. So, at the moment, it's sort of, there's a lull. And Alcaraz is, and, and Kyrgios a perfect position to do well in that. But I don't see Nick doing it. He's been out for a year and just mentally he's not quite this as capable to to put it all together for, for Grand Slam after Grand Slam. Yeah, yeah. What do you think is um in terms of uh in terms okay, so in terms of the players that you played against, you mentioned if, there's one as well that, that always and I think I know, I understand the reason for it. So Matt Philander, I remember hearing you say recently people didn't realise how you know quite how good he was. And he's got seven Grand Slams and that I think I knew that, but it kind of I kind of had forgotten it as well. Because I think it's yeah. because we didn't see him go that far in Wimbledon. And so mm. I think it was quarter final. But all the others like Ed Berg and Becker and yourself and Agassi and McEnroe, and we know we know them because they're there, you know, at the reaching the top in Wimbledon. But he, you know, he was uh, he had seven slams. In terms of the people that you played against, the players you played against, would you class one or two of them as your kind of um Nemesis, like they were, they were your. T- who, who were your tough? Who was your toughest or toughest plural opponents when you played? Either, I mean, there's, there's so many good players. Uh, what I found was um, certainly the guys that uh, you know got a lot of a lot of balls back, great returners. Being a serve and volleyer, you know the the most important thing uh, for like, to play against a serve volley is to make good returns and good passing shots and. And so, you know, you've got your Lendl's, uh, uh, but your Villander, guy, you know, who, who, who made some, yeah, he didn't hit the ball as hard as the guys these days, but his accuracy, his lob and shots like that. So it was always a really good challenge. If I played well, I felt like I could beat them. If I didn't yeah. play well, it was going to be a horrible day, you know, where they just passed me and hit lobs over my head. And they're always very, very consistent. Um you know, then you got you know McEnroe, I think, and and Ed Berger, the best volleyers I've ever played against. Uh, you know, I just you know, uh, you know, I, I played I played Agassi and a few of the, and 
I didn't play Sampras, luckily. <laughs> it's just the <laughs> end of my career. I was I was I was off and on with injuries, but I didn't play him. But uh, um, you know that would have been a a, a brutal brutal match but uh yeah it was always fun playing against somebody who was a contrasting styles and i think we like that um you know the borg borg mcenroe and and you know players like Mac, like Lend, against lendl who is you know more of a baseliner player but uh at wimbledon they had sort of the courts were so fast they had to play an unnatural type of game and so uh you know lendl did very very well considering he's not playing his favorite style of play on his favorite surface and so the uh, the contrast was always exciting, and it produced some fantastic matches. I mean, I lost to Lendl, I lost to uh, Villander uh, eight six in the fifth set in the final of the Australian Open. You know, that was uh, I think about five hour match. Um, you know, one of the one of the great matches. You know, it was very very exciting. Uh, but um, you know, he just got the best of me that day. And sometimes I I got the better of him. Sometimes he got the better of me. But uh, it was it was always an exciting, you know the contrast in styles, which we don't have now. And and I think Wimbledon has gone way too far now with the with the bounces of the court and the and the and the and the, 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 the balls are always slowest at, at Wimbledon. Slazenger balls are slow. They're heavy balls. Um and it remains you've got slow court you've got slow balls and the and a really even and slower grass court with high bouncing. You're just basically playing hard court tennis. Um and I think yeah. it's gone too far now. It's it's great when you see a final. Everybody says, "Wow, what a great final!" Yeah, but it's that's just one match of the tournament. The rest of them, you know, it's it's there's too too much baseline stuff going on now, and I think it's it's kind of lost its appeal a little bit. I've got to be honest. Don't see the contrasting uh, as, as we used to do, but um, you can't complain about you know brilliant finals. So uh, people go, "Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong with what's wrong with Wimbledon? The final was so good." I said, "Yeah, but there was three four hundred other matches." Not just one final. <laughs> yeah. Did they? I think they did, but you'll know more of this. Did they adjust the pressure of the book? Because I know back in more in your era, when and in people when you had like say Goran Ivanovic and others, um, I think it's Krajicek, when the serves were getting so fast on on the grass court and on the hard courts that they were looking at adjusting it, and then they said silly things like, "Oh, maybe you make the you take away the second serve, you might adjust the net." But was it? Did they? Did they do something? You mentioned Slazenger balls are kind of maybe softer. Did they? Did they do something? Was there a rule change in the in the ball or any anything in the match? Anything in the component of the match that did make it kind of more rally based? Yeah, well, they tried to. Yeah, they slowed. So they call it heavier balls. They're not actually literally heavier, but they they feel heavy when you hit them. So it's a it's a more dense rubber. Um, Okay. So the balls, the Slazenger balls are, uh, well, they call heavier, uh, but they're actually not actually heavier. They just feel heavier. So uh, it's a denser, a denser rubber, um, and they're taking the pressure out of it a, a little bit compared to what it used to be, but not not that much. But compared to the other balls around the world, which are much harder, and they really fly off the racket. And that was the idea to slow it down so there wasn't so many aces. And we, the, the bottom line is we had an era of some of the best servers of all time. We didn't realize it at the time. We just thought, oh my God, tennis has gone crazy. Sampras, Rosetsky, Ivanisevic, you know, Krychek, these these sort of guys um, were just thumping aces all the time. Um, but they were literally, even today, uh, with the big, big giant guys, they still put them in the, I'd still put them in the top, all of those guys in the top 10 greatest servers of all time. So yeah. they all came around at the same time. And everybody went, oh my God. We can't just have serving. It's the balls. It's not the balls. It wasn't. It wasn't the balls. Stop screwing around with it. But they needed to. The the the, the powerful strings came in about that time as well, and and the uh, and they they needed to fix the the grass courts were chopping up. So they 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 went to you know to to, to science to try and make the grass harder, the grass the grass a little bit longer so it would type of type of grass um a blend, different blend of fantastic they last so well um but the, the downside to that is, is that they bounce up really for the players hit passing shots and, and return there's sort of three things that sort of happened at about the same time i don't think they necessarily tried to coordinate I certainly think that they pat, pat by serving and they and they said we can't have goran serving 120 like that to win the to win the title um the um oh, back again I can hear you now. Yeah, just, just, yeah, back again. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I just think that the, um, it was ironic because they, 
they didn't want Goran to be serving, Goran Ivanisovic to be serving 100 aces in a tournament. And so they slowed the balls down. Ironically, the next year, he yeah. served 105 aces. So it just it just goes <laughs> to show, or whatever it was, he's actually served more aces, five more aces or six more aces than he'd served the year before. So it just goes to show, if, you, if you're a great server and you hit the ball on the line, it's it's going to be an ace. If it's a you know 120, 130 mile an hour or it's 100 mile an hour, it's still going to be an ace if you hit the line. So, um, yeah, it's, so they definitely panicked and I'm not, it's produced some really good rallies, but now it's just going out of control. These guys are so fast. They're taller. Their reach is expansive. And so you're just not seeing the variety of, of tennis. So it's, uh, um, yeah, there's, there's good things and bad things with every new generation and a change in technology. Yeah. I hear you, man. Um, are you, so this, this might sound a random question, but, I'll give you the reason my thinking. Are you um are you a big movie buff? Do you like we've talked about Borgs and we talked about you talked about history of, of great Roman emperors? Are you a big movie fan at all? Or or not really? Uh not not overly, no. I tend to I'm a bit of a documentary, I'm a bit of a history history buff, but uh not but um not not necessarily. If it's a comedy. I will. <laughs> I okay. just don't watch. I don't watch horror movies. I, 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 you know, like my main thing in my life these days is is mental. My mental well being. My mental health. Um, physical yeah. health, of course, has always been with me. But um, I just don't watch horror movies because they're just upsetting, uh, or slasher movies, or whatever. And some no, of those things. And some of the movies yeah. are just pretty upsetting. I'm just like, mm, I don't really want to put that shit in my head. Um, and I know. My my funny my son is a, absolutely he's just, oh the horror movies they're fan he loves absolutely loves and the goria they are and I'm like why do you want to put that he said dad it's just fake I don't know. it's just fun I'm like no I don't even want that in my head uh, <laughs> I'm busy doing work you know doing my, my meditation I want to the positive things and, and and I just yeah I just don't see I don't see any good in those some of those some of these things that are out on 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 the movies so I just don't bother watching it oh yeah no I I agree in terms of the horror genre yeah. That doesn't interest me at all. Um, the reason I ask that is is um, a lot of the stuff I do, I have kind of some favourite go-to films that I think can kind of explain or suggest some correlation with the, the times that we're in because it's kind of a wacky period of time as well in the, in the world. And some of those are things like um, Back to the Future. We've mentioned Borg's Terminator, oh, yeah. Matrix, those sorts of things. But I noticed yeah, yeah. a nice one w- with... Uh, with yourself and so Wimbledon champion actually comes to 176 which comes to uh the quantum field which also comes to back to the future and I thought oh that's interesting anyway it was something I found when I was you know looking your stuff up I was like oh I wonder if that's the movie guy but uh I've got this 88 well, months yeah I mean I, I, you know those movies you're talking about they're classics yeah absolutely though I, I love that some of that stuff the quantum the, the quantum field is that what it, yeah that's that's ab- absolutely fascinating to me all, all, all this this sort of stuff uh yeah um yeah I, i'm kind of fascinated by that and and the great teachers and the spiritual teachers i've talked to stoicism i've got a foundation called the aurelius foundation it's not actually mine but i'm a patron of it okay and that's, uh, that's stoicism to for, for young people it's uh we got fantastic bunch of uh people we do some do some conferences and things like that it's worth going on and having a little look um and so we have fantastic people but it's it's uh the more the more that you hear about the the ancients and their wisdom and this yeah. can go all the way from to jesus to, to to whoever um the more you realize that it's this is quantum physics what, yeah. what they're talking about is there's a total total link and and i think i don't know who said it once said well science will catch up to religion at some stage or, or <laughs> wisdom at, at some stage and it's yeah. going around and, and so bruce lipton bruce i think bruce lipton is very yeah epigenetics with bruce lipton yeah 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 so i mean he talks about he says that's 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 what it is and it's and it's and the matrix is that's that's a fantastic movie. Inception, Inception to Inception. me is love, the movie. It's, the that, it's a Hollywood version. 
of uh, absolutely what what is happening to us as we're talking on here or in the, in the world. I mean, it's a Hollywood version, but we are in different levels of of awareness, and 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 we just happen to be. I'm just happen to be in this awareness at the moment on the human body running around being known as a tennis player. But I'm I feel like I'm I'm not really a tennis player. I'm really a, a teacher and, and to teach yeah. my children and my 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 people about about life and and things like that and. And it is inception. You know, what level are you? What level are you at? I mean, what whatever are you in the dream state? I mean, is, is this a dream state? What you know, we're four do we in four D uh, reality at the moment, or we you know, and 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 you know, we've it's it's actually I, I love that movie. I, I watch it time and time again. Obviously, it's an action Hollywood version of it, but it is, to, in my opinion, exactly the the the, the best way of describing what the world is what what we are here is is through their inception it's uh you know you know if you boil it down to the the reality and not the action stuff i i totally think inception is i'm a big christopher nolan uh fan i think he's probably the greatest filmmaker of all time uh, in my what opinion. else has he done so what he's done, he done other stuff like that? yeah so he's done he's done interstellar which is the one with oh, matthew yeah. McConaughey, where they go into the into space and they there's all the time warping, you know, you could be an hour down on a planet and it's seven years and all this sort of stuff. Um, he's done the prestige, which is brilliant. I mean, it talks about Tesla physics. It brings in the possibility of things like clones as well and magic, real magic, the Tesla physics, the other physics. Um, he does Memento, which is one of his early ones. The Batman trilogy, so Heath Ledger with the Joker, The Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins, Tenet, which was came out in 2020, the time reversal. I think that's got a lot of what's been going on with with lockdown. It mentions lockdowns. It mentions yeah. eight of spades. Um, it's got gold being moved around the planet. There's a woman just on GB News the other day said, oh, yeah, America moved 650 planes during lockdown to take their gold back from the Vatican. What people like yourself and, I and Matt and others would have probably heard that back then. I know I did back in 2020. But it was in the movie, in the Christopher Nolan movie, and he's just come out with the Oppenheimer one, which is more of a kind of, more of a kind of commentary, a documentary on Oppenheimer with the nuclear thing. But um, go see I, my player wants me to go to see it tonight. Actually, Oppenheimer. Yeah, I was yeah. fascinated about them. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a that's a lot of stuff. See, I'm not obviously a movie buff so much that I know everybody's everybody's stuff, but um, yeah, I'm at so I'm totally fan. I'm totally uh, interested in. The, the let's say the non-mainstream media news stuff that and yeah. uh you know yeah. yeah the gold the gold moving around uh you know all, all that sort of stuff uh, it's it's yeah there's definitely a lot of, a lot of stuff that's going on behind the scenes that nobody <laughs> people take yeah definitely have you with that stuff with the behind the scenes yeah. no are you saying about the Sorry. yeah the mainstream media stuff so, in terms of the stuff behind the scenes, Pat, have you come in your study, your research? I mean, I'm, I'm, a, and people differ on things, and that's fine. But I've looked a lot into like the Kennedys, into Trump's role right now, and I'm pro both of them. Um, people have different opinions, and that's fine. But um, have you looked at, and you're into history? Have you come across any Kennedy stuff that makes you question maybe the stuff back in '63 might not be quite what is on the tin? Any thoughts on that at all? Is that in your sort of realm of? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that you know he was he was knocked off not by Lee Harvey Oswald. There's no doubts about it. it was a there's a a combination of mafia, CIA, and whoever else. But um, yeah, and that's I, I, I don't. Does anybody really doubt? Does everybody really think that 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 uh, that he was a lone, was a lone shooter? I mean, it's just ridiculous. I saw a really Really, really good documentary. The most thorough documentary. Oh, I wish I could know what it's called. It's oh, the man. All, all the world is a rich man's trick. Yes. Yeah, yeah, called. yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that's the that the most in the most thorough stuff. And I was sitting with a um, yeah, a, a, a mate of mine, Billy Duffy from the Cult, and his partner, and we sat down and watched watched that at his house. I was up with Oh yeah, Lilani. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. yeah of course. Yeah. And yeah, uh, uh, we yeah, sat down. And yeah. yeah, she's great. She's awesome. So we're sitting there watching this, and they're just going, "No, no way!" It, it was <laughs> so good. This documentary. 
I mean, it's 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 full on people out there who open my eyes towards a lot of things, but I'm also very curious. I go, ah, okay, you know, let's let's uh, see what's going on. I mean, I think I think the best thing that happened for the world is Robert Kennedy Jr. get becoming president. I don't know if that's going to happen, but at least he's calling out. He's he, at least he's honest calling out. He's calling out everything at the moment. So there's uh, there's certainly a lot of uh, really weird stuff going on, but. You know, amongst all of that, you just got to keep keep coming back to your just your health and your well mental well being. And you know, if there's some shit that's going on, if you if you're mentally you know feeling good about yourself and you can deal with it, and uh, and and you know, you, the, 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 there's the scandemic as I call it was just just horrific to, for so many people. Um, yeah, it's so much damage to so many people and so many lives and physically and mentally and and whatever and. You know, we now know it's absolute biggest waste of time. I mean, but I knew it. I, I what I can't quite understand is that how the hell did a tennis player? I mean, I know I'm a health nut, so I was exploring in, in looking into every all these things. Going, wait a minute. You know, we know that. You know, what, what's going on? I just smelled a rat from from the first first moment. But how did yeah. I know? Within three months, listen to all these top scientists going. Wait a minute, this can't work. This doesn't work. There's no way it's work. Here's the research within three months, and Australia is still promoting it as a, the, the you know as, as the way to go. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and it's US. You know, and how could, I worked it down three months. Here we are, four years later. We're still the three almost four years <laughs> later. We're still they're still promoting okay. this this stuff. So it's it's like well, it's 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 so so obvious that it's you know as somebody says, just follow the money. It's just. Uh, yeah. You know, but you know, look after yourself and well-being. And uh, you know, as I said, I'm a yeah, you know, I'm a health nut, so I'm taking my uh, uh, you know, I've through this, I've actually discovered met up some really cool people who've got some unbelievable health products and various things, and and uh, you know, so it's it's been one side of the one side is 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 bad but the flip side is that there's there's a lot of a lot of information out there and that's a great thing about the internet isn't it that yeah. okay some people might call a conspiracy or whatever or not or weirdos but there's a lot of information out there and you just can listen and pick and choose and and, and find out what's going on yeah exactly definitely it's interesting you the stuff you said about the kennedy so some numbers I've noticed with it is Kennedy is uh, 78 in numbers. Patrick's also 78 in numbers. So obviously, you know, your first name when you're, when you're hearing from your father. And you mentioned RFK. So I've spoken with him. I'm, I'm hoping to do a show with him at some point. He's, I know his schedule is busy, but we're trying to get, get something scheduled in hopefully the next month or two. So maybe you can come on that one with us, man. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. sorry about the, this wife. Oh. That's right, man. I can hear you now. Oh. It's gone quiet. I but, can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can hear you, buddy. Um, and something. This is interesting. I thought so. Your your uh, birthday is May twenty seventh. That's correct. Yeah. There we are. We're back again. You're back in the room. Back weird. in the room. Yep, I can hear you now. Yeah. You there? Yeah, I'm here, man. Yeah. Yeah. Was... yeah cool. Sorry about that. That's all right. You anything? Yeah, so some interesting numbers in terms of Kennedy. So Kennedy in numbers is 78. So K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. Patrick is also 78. And you've obviously, you know, there was a Patrick Kennedy, although his son passed early on. Um, but your birthday, am I right in thinking or, or researching May 27th? Is that correct, your birthday? Yeah. So May 27th in numbers comes to 239. Which actually comes to 1963, which was obviously the year of JFK. Um, but your the day of your Wimbledon victory was July 5th. That's an important birthday in terms of personal family stuff here for me. But July 5th comes to 117, which comes to the word manifesting. And my mate Ricky Lambert, ex Liverpool, England, Southampton striker, friends with Matt. He talks a lot about the manifesting. So he's big into this with the quantum field and creating your own reality, et cetera. But the interesting thing, when you mentioned Robert F. Kennedy Jr., 
Yeah. So our yeah. birthday is January 17th, which is a one and a 17. So it's one seventeen, which comes to the word manifesting. So it's interesting yeah. that there's a connection there with yourself and with Ricky Lambert and with RFK, you know, so July 5th, the date of your Wimbledon victory, 117 manifesting. Um, and uh, RFK's birthday is January 17th. So anyway, I thought that was interesting for you. Um, but yeah, I love, I love this. I love all the stuff you're describing. I'm into that. You know, I just want to know what the, what the hell this is. What is the universe? You know what? Because it's not what. Mm. It's not what's said on the tin, but I do believe this time, this squashing, for want of a better phrase, that we went through in 2020 with all the restrictions, I think it, it, it's almost like the universe kind of forced you to have a look at stuff. I mean, I was looking at stuff beforehand, and I'm sure you were as well, but it, it kind of took a quantum leap. I mean, it even happened in a leap year of 2020. And we got another one coming in 2024, but it kind of pushed mankind they could either kind of get knocked over or kind of pushed into another a jump up a level in terms of inquiring and getting more and more information. And that's definitely been my experience. I didn't know about the numbers until early lockdown. They kind of just came to me. No one kind of sat me down. It, it kind of, I was like, this is the fucking big one. They're going to do, <laughs> they're doing something crazy now. I need to figure it out. And then boom, it's like, all right, there you go, Tom, you're ready. Take the numbers. And I, you know, I, uh, I was given them mm. not by a conversation with a person, but, consciousness kind of just just gave it to me and i was like okay i'm gonna run with it um and your story seems you know you you've got that inquiring one and you're delving and you just want to you're trying to figure out what the heck's going on and you're fascinated by the process as well um which i yeah. am and I, yeah you know. I, think, I think it's one of the great um the great things to, to be able to have is certainly as, as a as a coach or uh, you know as a father as well is to, is to is to have a player or or is to have, have an open and you go, oh, I don't believe that. Okay, and up at least uh, keep it open. You have the ability to learn and, and to learn. Then you have been a health nut. I've been, you know, it's the first guy to have a team of of uh, people around me for Wimbledon. I mean, now it's commonplace to have coaches and physios and trainers and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I had them for small periods of time, not, not full time like they do now, but um, you know, at, at Wimbledon and, and you know taking amino acids and getting blood tests done and getting hormone tests done. And, you know, now, you know, I, I've seen, seen you do some stuff with, with CBD. Uh, you know, I'm going yeah. to be launching a CBD range as well. I'm, I'm, I'm massive on that for recovery and, and, and joints and stuff like that. You know, I, uh, and I search out different, different things and different products. Uh, there's a great product out there called continual G, which is, um, Create it's uh, it's glycine which makes your body make glutathione. Now glutathione is an um, is your main an antioxidant. They're called the master antioxidant, and this stuff kills. It, it boosts. It's the only product that actually boosts your glutathione, because most uh, glutathione pills you take and they get absorbed in your stomach. They don't they don't boost your glutathione levels. Any glut if you get boosted glutathione levels, you just don't get sick. It's as simple as that. And I haven't had any colds or or, or anything for. Uh, for, for the best part of three years. So I actually got, as you said, it's the universe. I just got into this just as the COVID stuff was going on. And I often talked about it and I said, oh, I've been going around the world for three years. I never stopped because I, first of all, I didn't believe, yeah. not to say that COVID wasn't there. There wasn't something there, which we know now has been um, created in, uh, in the US center. China come back. I mean, I, th I think it's it's it's. Uh, I don't think anybody's disputing that it's a gain of function stuff that they try to make this horrible th thing come. But the biggest crime for me is the fact that they they were the governments wanted people to be sick. They wanted they they'd stopped they stopped uh, uh, ivermectin. They stopped uh, hydroxychloroquine. They the you know the uh, the continual G, I know the people in the continual G talk to the Australian government because they found that that it actually, I probably should, should I I can say this because they're not saying it, but um, uh, that it actually killed, it killed the coronavirus dead. And they showed them that and they were, well, no, we're not interested. How much studies have you been, done on it? And so, well, I've done all the studies. Um, it kills these viruses dead. So your, your cells, when they get tired and they get weak, uh, you get tired and you get weak, the, the glutathione, depletes and that's when the virus can come in so you know i found i found all these 
you know, amazing things that have come out of out of you know this horrible situation. And ironically, uh, you met some amazing, amazing people from. So you're right. It's it's sort of it's sort of um, it just squashes a nice way of putting it. Yeah. It's, it's sort of separated. So sort of separated the, the the it's it's made us look look at ourselves, isn't it? Made us look internally yeah. to, to what's going on in, in in the world and and uh, you know if if inception is right, then the universe is actually just in our head. So, yeah. uh, so let's get <laughs> the simulation. Yeah, that thing in yeah. our head. It's just in our head. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a dream within a dream within a dream. <laughs> I can hear you, buddy. Yes. Can you see me? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Excellent. Back in the room, man. <laughs> uh, where were we? Yeah, we're talking about dreams within dreams within dreams with Inception. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I, I think the re- reality is the uh, if if you're uh, if the universe, if you are your universe, if you are your own universe, I mean, I, I mean, I think the, uh, maybe maybe it's the fact that I grew up, you know, Roman Catholic and had to go to church every day. The other the things that didn't quite make sense to me in church, uh, you know, about you know, your God is within you and, and all this sort of stuff, or you were one with God. And, and you're you own create you're own universe, and I'm I'm starting to get the picture of it. I'm 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 sure I'll be quizzed to the to the I but uh, is that yeah you can uh, some of the things that have been happening to me are just crazy. Careful what I manifest and put in my head again. And unfortunately, the media are, uh, have been uh, bombarding. I don't want us to say what we're saying, Pat. <laughs> That's what it is. It's the gremlins. It's all yeah, right, sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't work out what's going on. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, recently is is and I've heard this from Michael Yeadon, the great the great scientist. Michael Yeadon, okay, yeah. Are you there, Pat? Yeah, okay. I can't that? see you, but that's all right. Hang on. How's that? Is that yeah. better? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's my end. It's just uh, I've had so many problems here at this hotel. But... It's the Hotel California, there you but go. you can you can <laughs> you can go there, but you can't ever you can check out but you can never leave. <laughs> Never leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that product that you spoke about um, sounds really interesting. Is that so? Your is that your company? You're part of the company that's promoting those. I'd be interested to know more about that. Could put it out on here. Oh yeah. They're going continual G. Continual G, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll keep, keep we'll, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually kind of bullet bulletproofs your bulletproofs your immune system. That's what it does. It really okay. bullet, it, it uh, yeah. So uh, you know that with the CBD oil and other things. That's and uh, some of the other bits and pieces I. It's it's keeping me pretty healthy for an old guy. Well, you've always looked in good nick. You've always been in great shape, and you know, 
now you're revealing a little bit of the things that have helped you do it. So thanks for that. Um, can you hear me, buddy, still? Yeah, I got you. Cool, man. Talking of the, of the, like, the quantum... I, can, I definitely quantum, hear you. <laughs> okay, you can hear me. All right. As long as you, we can hit... Be like a radio show with just, like, fixed pictures, so that's all right. Um, so there's something else I wanted to mention in regards to uh, Novak. So, obviously, you and Novak share it, and, and I do similar opinions on... I'll just, for you know, for being on YouTube, I'll call it the the product that, you know, people were encouraged to take, et cetera. So people know they can read between the lines on that. But so obviously Novak's spoken a few times about quantum physics. You're into that. I'm into that. Matt's name comes to that. Matthew Letizia, quantum physics 206. But I came out with, with a nice phrase. So you, you'll know this with Tesla. He talked about the power of the number 369. He said, if you knew the, if you knew the power of 369, you'd have a key to the universe. No, I don't fully understand it. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but I'm fascinated by it. So I've delved into it a bit, and I'm, you know, I don't know all the stuff about it, but it, it fascinates me. And Tesla, as a, as a, as a person, as a being, as a, as a representation for pushing boundaries, fascinates me. But I, in the numbers, yeah. this is, this has come up, and um, anyway, I'll, I'll read it out. I'll share it. So, if you say the phrase, if you say. Um, Here we go. So there's there's a there's a number of frequencies that seem to be healthy for people. One of them is 432 hertz, 432 hertz. Yep. So they change that in terms of music. They recorded in 440, but 432 is a natural harmonic. Anyway, this comes up in numbers. So if you say Nikola, uh, if you do Novak Djokovic is the reincarnation of Tesla, comes to 432. So that's quite interesting. They're both from Serbia. Novak talks about him. They were both polymath, super intelligent guys, you know, not just tennis, but, you know, he speaks out how many different languages. Tesla was known as the dove. He wrote a book about the return of the dove. Now, what is the dove? The dove is quite an interesting question. Um, but if you do Nikola Tesla, the dove, um, or Djok Djokovic is the reincarnation of uh Nikola Tesla the Dove, which is interesting. That comes to 369. So that's quite interesting as well. That's interesting. It's like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> reincarnation comes to 141. My <laughs> my name, Tom Bushnell. It comes to quantum leap. We had the quantum leap effectively of human consciousness, either in a in a in a backward way, depending on how people interpreted it in 2020, or it like say squeezed a lot of people opened up and developed and found out more. Um, but quantum leap is 141, reincarnation is 141. Um, so I find that, that is, that's interesting, the thing with Tesla, that, that a possible connection between Tesla and Djokovic, maybe they're a fractal of each other. I don't know. I mean, the universe is mind-boggling, really, and it's fascinating. But one thing I do know is, is they're both from Serbia. <laughs> um, they're both super intelligent. And Djokovic, the later version, if they are connected, talks about um quantum physics and that's what tesla was known for and those numbers three six nine um are important so yeah nikola tesla the dove well you've got uh, i'm listening pat oh, over the... uh you know he's a he's, he's... I've got to know because he master charities and everything, but I'd be very surprised if he wasn't inspired by Tesla. I mean, he's mm. yeah. I think it's uh, you know in many ways it's tough for him, but in, you know not necessarily the. Uh, Be like uh, uh, like Edison. It's not his favourite. So it wasn't, you know. Um, uh, Nine is that they need their energy. There's energy frequencies that's good in their energy frequencies that are bad for us. That's the reason about that. Um, 
Yeah, good energy, bad energy, yeah. You talk of energy, so this number system that I use is called gematria. You can call it gematria, you can call it simple gematria, or you can call it simple English gematria. But gematria, just simply on its own, comes to 74 when you spell it out. The word energy comes to 74. Um, and uh, the word simple is 74, and English is 74. So they're all the same. They're all the same value, simple English gematria. We talked about Back to the Future, the DeLorean time machine. DeLorean is 74. So that is, you know, to do with the quantum. Um, they're all they're all there. It's, it's, all, it's all connected. And it's like, so if we're in a simulation, you know, maybe a high-level computer game, but working in our consciousness, you know, the dream state, et cetera, it's like, how is it done? How is it coded? Maybe one way is through numbers and the alphabet, the letters, et cetera. Because you have ones and zeros in, you know, binary with computers that we know in this dream, you know, reality. But if you uh, if you extrapolate it further, then maybe probably not too much of a, a fetch uh, to or too much of a jump to suggest that maybe letters and numbers are into, intertwined in this in this reality, in this simulation, in this matrix that we're talking about. Um, I mean, even if you do. Um, the gematria, so 74 plus the word the, which is 33, the gematria, it comes to 107, which is the word quantum. Um, maybe there's a connection there, you know, maybe that's what it's pointing at. Maybe that's what it's trying to teach us. You talked about um, one of the things that Tesla spoke about was uh, frequency, energy, and vibration. You talked about your big into history. And also, you haven't said the word, but you've described it. Sovereign, you're a sovereign individual. You want to, you, you want to be individual. You want to grow um, and be a sovereign man like myself and others. And you don't want to be controlled by this, you know, this big global agenda. Um, but the word sovereign is 114. The word trump card is 114. The word history is 114. And the word frequency is 114. And frequency was one of the three main components that Tesla spoke about energy, frequency, and vibration. And you talk about meditating, and meditate is 77. Vibrate is 77. Matter is 77. Christ is 77. Power is 77. Hertz, the measure of frequency, the unit of frequency, is also 77. So all these things are all closely connected. You know, you can see clues with the gematria, with the number codes, with the word codes, the alphabet codes, you know. Yeah, that might be my new next tattoo, number 77. It's at, uh, it's in the, uh, yeah, the vibration. Uh, yeah, uh, there's, you know, you, you, you feel people, you, you meet people and they, you see, it seem to vibrate at a different frequency, don't they? they and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you, you can feel that, can't you? Uh, this, yes. And yeah, definitely. Yeah. The goodness of people. Yeah. The goodness of people. And you see some people, you go, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> But at a different frequency, different frequency all together. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm sure over the years we'll have more of it. And uh, yeah, that's all. And we have about you know uh, weather altering things that you know, you could, that have been going on forever, and 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 uh, electric cars that have been. Seeing these electric cars a hundred years old and various things and running on water and stuff like that. It's like, well, where have they been? Well, follow yeah. them, follow the money. These yeah. manufacturers don't want these cars out. They don't want they don't want you know things that stop the the uh, sender. So that that to me has been the most troubling thing, particularly for us and it's uh last few years recent at least uh Dying and issues, just tragic. What they've, you know, what they've, what they've done, and uh, you know, just vibe different frequency to the stuff. Yeah, definitely. Have you heard of Tartaria? No. What's that? So that's a, it's a good question. It's a big question. So Tartaria is supposed is supposed to be a 
another reality, another existence that used to um, historically be what was on the earth back in, I guess, a few generations ago. Um, Parteria in numbers is 88. You have to travel 88 miles per hour in Back to the Future to time travel. Uh, 88 is Scotland. You've got the Highlander film, you know, with the time traveler. You've got Trump is 88. There's a book series called The Adventures of Baron Trump, the time traveler, and that's supposed to have been written 100 years ago. But Tartaria, they say, it. so some of the evidence of it is when you see things like great kind of Gothic cathedrals, things that are built. And now, if you didn't have electricity the way that we've got it, to try and build those massive structures, unless you had a different power source from what we've got today. Yeah. But historically, we're taught, you know, two or 300, 400 years ago, they didn't have those power sources. So how on earth did a man just ch- kind of chiseling away create these great artistic masterpieces. <laughs> so a lot of people are saying that it was this 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 land, this this reality called Tart- Tartaria, and they say that it was based on a different timeline, it was a different frequency. And so that's another yeah. kind of rabbit hole to look at. But it seems to make sense. Yeah. Also, so the thing with the mud the mud floods, you'll see some buildings in kind of old, maybe parts of England, other parts around the world, but you'll see, you'll walk along you know, the pavement, and then you'll see like a kind of an archway popping out of the street. And it's like, well, how did that get there? So they say there was this thing called the mud flood that covered a lot of this Tartarian architecture up. Um, so that's, yeah, that's Tartaria. So that's, I'm not an expert on Tartaria by any means, but it's another piece of the puzzle that has kind of come to my attention in the last few years with all this stuff. But it seems to be, yeah, what's that? there's a lot on it. You know? Documentary series. The documentary series. Um, the uh, the research, uh, there's an ancient uh, ancient myst- ancient history mystery. Gosh, what's it called? Okay. Uh, and he does a, he does a great thing on the talks about the monoliths, monolithic uh, buildings and 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 uh, statues and and the all around the various places around the world. Again, the same thing is how did they possibly build these before? Uh, you know, th- this is they're talking about you know th- way before the for the, for the Egyptian, the pyramids, yeah. uh, you know, how to build these sort of, sort of things. I mean, there's no, there's, I mean, I have, I have no doubts whatsoever that there's been some visitations or some advice from, from highly, yeah. uh, higher advanced people that have, that have come, come into, uh, come onto the earth and, and have held in some way. I'm just trying to get this for, I want to get it right. Uh, the the name of the the the, the series, but it's uh oh on. I've just gone past it all. <laughs> Sorry, you have to edit this out. Because <laughs> okay. uh, my my partner just sent it to me. Oh, it's on one. It's it's the same for this series, and I'm sorry. So I'm clicking through all the, all the messages. Mm. I can't find it now. Oh, here it is. Uh, Ancient Apocalypse. Sorry. Yeah, the series are called Ancient Apocalypse. So they, they talk about the different monoliths around the world and how the creations are identical to right across the other side of the world. You know, before there was a, you could say, well, same sort of story, this giant person coming down and showing them coal, teaching them how to start using different types of electricity. Right. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of info going on. That's excited. That that keeps my mind. Oh, well, let me call it. You know, maybe they're even away. I think that's um, uh, you know, and somebody with that that set sort of mind. I think, and I, you know, I like to bring that onto into this into the sports and the coaching and the commentating and things like that. It's uh, um, new fears, new songs, new sports, new diet, new nutrition, new stuff. So I would call Brother Left and I still I can I continue to do that in, with my with my players. It's uh, always stuff to learn out there. 
Definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Can you hear us still, Pat? Oh, it? Yeah, I, I can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool, man. Well, you know what, buddy? I mean, this has been a lot of fun. And I didn't know that you were... I was hoping you would be, but I didn't know that you were into so much... Um, uh, truth, alternate truth, you know, trying to find the answers to stuff. So it's been a real pleasure. And viewers will, you know, those that are really tuned in will be able to get past all the blitz with the Wi-Fi and stuff. But maybe not too far into the future when we're able to get like a really strong Wi-Fi connection, maybe we could pick it up again because there's loads, I think there's loads more we could talk about and go with and I think the audience would really love it. Um, but uh, I think the wife, I, I, yeah. I call them the gremlins. I think the gremlins have been trying to stop us <laughs> saying exactly what we wanted to say, you know. Uh, and that might just take, you know, be the form of, of, a, of yeah. a funny yeah. Wi-Fi connection. But it's been, it's been really good, a lot of fun. And uh, I think there's a lot we could Thanks, talk man. about and share, yeah. Yeah, it'd be great to get uh, any time. Yeah, sorry about the, what's going on with the Wi-Fi connections. But... Anyway, apologies, but uh, yeah, thanks for putting up with me. And yeah, we'll we'll catch up. We'll do something something again. Yeah, there might be a, a different a different uh, path we can we can go down a little bit. That'd be fun. Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be really good, Pat. That'd be really good. Do you want to just let everyone know again the links that they can? We'll put them below, but where people can uh, will find you or, or the the companies that you you talked about the 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 G and because I'm interested in looking at that stuff as well. So I'll put the yeah. link below for you. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, just the, the one, the the Aurelius Felt Foundation. Uh, that's that's interesting stuff, and it's great educational, uh, non religious of course. It's wisdom from the Finns and uh, CBD in general. But, but the uh, yeah, Continual G is the product of a, of a professor, a friend of mine from the University of New South Wales, Australia, invented that, and that's that's the glutathione booster. So it's the only only product in the world that can do it. Uh, in your G. It's worth looking into. If it's uh, immune, immune boost to keep it. Excellent. We I take all the time is, is, is that just traveling. Yeah, when do you when do you get back to the UK? When are you back in the UK? Is it after the US Open? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. It might be a couple of weeks or week or so after that, yeah. Okay, but That's I'll be right. around. Latter part, of October, November. We'll be out. Um, yeah, I got kids. I got my grandson kid in Norway, and and uh, so I'll go there for Christmas like that, and head to Australia and so. And then we got pre. There's a whole lot of balls in the air at the moment. <laughs> I just gotta yeah. have to play a bit by ear. But uh, yeah, to catch up actually in person. Yeah, definitely. I'd love that. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm down on the south coast, but London's my old stomping ground, so I can come up. Yeah, no problem. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah, let's get balls and and, uh, and catch up. That'd be good. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good. Awesome. Thanks, Pat. God bless you, buddy. Good luck with the match tomorrow. Okay, mate. And, uh, hopefully she wins the tournament. That'd be awesome. Sounds like she's on a great trajectory with you. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thanks for your time about the... Uh, okay. Beyond my control, unfortunately. Yeah. But we can... <laughs> if people tuned in, they've got a good heart, they'll understand it. So awesome. Thanks, Pat. God bless you, buddy. See you soon. Okay. <laughs> Cheers, man. Take care. Cheers, mate. Bye. 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 Bye.